Hello and welcome to Pignit. If you're not familiar with my channel, my name is Jessie. Nice to meet you. I'm a freelance illustrator. Today's video is a celebration of a couple of things. I'm not sure whether or not this will be published on Tuesday or Wednesday, but I'm going to do my best to get it uploaded as soon as possible because today, which is July 5th, Tuesday, is the two-year anniversary of the day that I got laid off for my 9 to 5 soul-sucking desk job. Now most people would look back on the day they got laid off and kind of get bad feelings inside, but for me, it's a celebration. I had been very unhappy at that job for the last year that I worked there. I worked there for three years. I spent the last six months that I had worked there trying to work up the courage to quit, but I was too scared. And I knew that the 9 to 5 desk job wasn't for me, I knew that very quickly, but I just stayed because I was scared. And that's what millions of people do every day, they stay at their jobs that are unfulfilling and they stay because they're scared. That day, I was leaving a movie theater and I turned on my phone to check my messages. I had two messages on my phone. The first was my brother-in-law who worked above me at that company and he said to swing by his house on the way home from the, the movie theater. The second was my coworker telling me that the CEO had laid her off via text message that evening. So I had a pretty good idea of how that conversation was gonna go with my brother-in-law. That evening, I came home to tell my aunt, who had been staying with us for a couple of weeks, that I'd been laid off, and she wasn't really sure of how to respond because I was like, I was beaming. And I told her I got laid off, and I knew that it was going to be the best thing that ever happened to me. So I was just like smiling ear to ear. And I was right. I've learned a lot over the last two years, and if you're interested in knowing anything about what I've learned, let me know in the comment section below. I might make a video about it, because I know that it's something that is an interest of a lot of people that are considering creative solopreneurship. What I've learned mostly is how completely backwards our way of thinking about careers is. Everyone has this mentality that you have to do this punch in, punch out, go work for the man, 9 to 5 desk job, that's the way it is, you don't have a choice. And for me, I never liked that my potential and my income were always going to be determined by somebody else especially as a creative. Creative careers are vanishing more and more every year. There's basically no such thing as an in-house illustrator anymore, and I imagine the same will probably happen for graphic designers too, it's just a reality. People are outsourcing every day. There's a shift that's happening with our generation that doesn't follow the same blueprint as our parents or grandparents, and I think that it's scaring a lot of people, and a lot of postgraduates. But while we have opportunities that seem to be disappearing every year that our parents might have had, we also are given opportunities that their generation couldn't even begin to comprehend. And what I think is amazing is that when you are, especially if you are a creative person, you can get started in high school. You don't have to be this post-grad, you don't have to have a master's to start your career as a creative entrepreneur. Like You, you can start today. You can start dipping your toes in and kind of getting an idea of what it's going to be like without even having to go through all, like, all the internships and all that stuff. And that's kind of a really amazing thing if you think about it. Because there's a lot of jobs that you don't get to test drive them before you get your degree and you're supposed to find your job and that's it. And it's like, here you go. Enjoy your job. I hope you like what you went to school for the last six years for. Because sometimes you get your degree and you go to your job and it's supposed to be what you're supposed to do and you realize I don't want to do this, this isn't for me, what was I thinking? Being a self-employed creative individual is not the safe road, but is it really any safer to put all of your eggs in one basket and sit at that solitary job that you can be fired from at any given day? I don't know why everybody thinks that getting a regular 9 to 5 desk job is the safe way because you could get laid off tomorrow and now you have nothing. But if you divide up your income and you have multiple sources of income streams, the chances of all of those sources of income streams all collapsing on one day are so much less likely. Honestly, I could talk about this forever, but whenever people ask me how things are going with my job, I always just tell them, the ship's still floating. I'm not making as much as I was making at that desk job, but the ship's still floating. And I love everything about it, and I wouldn't have it any other way. So why the carrot cake, you ask? Well, last year, to celebrate my one year layoff anniversary. I made a little tiny carrot cake out of polymer clay, so I decided to keep the theme of tiny and carrot cake going. I don't know if I'm going to do that next year, but I figured eh, this year I'm making tiny food too, which I just have a thing for tiny food, I guess. Today is also a day of celebration because I have recently hit 100 subscribers on this channel! And I really hope that I can look back on this video and be embarrassed that I was so excited over 100 subscribers. 
but I remember when I had zero and it's so weird because you set up your video and you're like, hello everybody, and there's nobody there. I think that having a YouTube channel is so incredibly different and new and intimidating and I'm just so thankful for those of you who have chosen to keep my little videos in your YouTube feed. Thank you so much. I hope that someday you can comment on a video of mine and be like, I was part of the first 100 and I'll be like, hey, we'll like exchange emojis. So I think I've rambled enough for this video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up to let me know. Subscribe if you want to see more of what I do and leave a comment telling me about something good that happened to you this week. There's a reason for celebration all the time. I actually have another one. Last week, National Fuel sent me a check because we overpaid on our gas bill. Small wins are sometimes the best wins. Thank you guys so much for subscribing and for supporting me and for being there. I'll see you guys next time. If I feel badly about myself that I haven't been as productive as I would have liked to be, that's not gonna help the situation. That's just gonna make me feel worse. So if that's the kind of person that you are too, just try to forgive yourself and just know that there's another day to start again and do better.